Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Welcome into the Friday, February 18, 2022 Market Plus. Back with us, Sue Martin. Sue, when we've had you on, uh, I'd say in the last couple of years, I mean, I always go back to that July appearance that we had where we were remote, if you remember. I was in the hotel room, you were in your office, yeah. and it was so gloom and dooms that day. And it flipped, and I've talked about it with everybody who's come in over the last couple of years. Since that time in 2020, there's been some stars that have aligned, that have continued to align. What are those things that have all kind of come together that maybe we're just not knowing? We clearly see weather issues and we understand trade, but have there been other things out there? Well, I've always been positive towards the 20s. And, um, and of course the frosting on the cake was the pandemic coinciding with other things. The demand around the world, production, global stocks. While you hear they're supposed to be so good, and of course I alluded to China and their fuzzy math in their uh, granaries. And uh, in fact, there was several, uh, how do you wanna say it, prosecutions in the last half of last year uh, because of this. And I think they're finding out that the grain's just not there. But the thing is, along with it, is you come through this pandemic and you have the um, uh, inflationary move, all the money that's been, not only in the US, other countries did it too, uh, giving money to people to keep them content, happy, whatever. And, and then on top of it, our immigration. Look at our immigration, what, over two million? And most of those are young men. So it's a demographic of where they eat more than a woman or a child, and that's protein. And so you're our, talking domestic demand. Is, well, is, that's our domestic demand. That's what you're talking yes. about. Yes. Okay. But then you look at, of course, South American weather's added all, all of this, but also on top of it, a huge inflation. And the pandemic was like the frosting on the cake <laughs> as we awaken from it around the world. Right. And so, supplies so, are tight, very tight. So we have a question from Dana Prey City that I meant to ask during the program, but it's okay. exactly about what you're talking about. And he wants to know how much of this corn and soybean rally is strictly because of inflation in the last 12 months. He's asking for math. What percent because of inflation and what percent because of everything else? Well, I'm going to do a wag guess. Um, first off, I think the inflation kind of started to kick in a little bit here this week on the soybeans. Soybeans have always in the past been, uh, you, back in the 70s, they were used as an inflationary hedge. You look at Argentine farmers, they hold on to soybeans because their inflation is out of sight. It's just crazy. So they hold on to soybeans. And, but this week, there was another market that came on the scene that I think, yes, it could have been part of it on the geopolitical. I don't think so. I think it's more inflation starting to kick in, and it was gold. And the gold, our, our indicators on gold are just set up beautifully. Uh, we came up over 1,900 on um, June or March and April mm -hmm. contracts. But the kicker is, I think last year's highs are coming out. You set up a low last year than you did in 2020. So I think that high is coming out and then we're gonna go after the uh, high of 2020. And um, I, I think you've got gold on a mission and everything I look at, every indicator I've got was beautifully aligned this week, late last week actually, and they're just getting started. Now the daily, of course, those With move gold. fast. Yeah, okay. and gold. But well, that's gonna be supportive to beans. Okay. It's gonna help soybeans. Um, but there are so many other things coming in. Fundamental, you know, the supplies are tight, we're tight. And in the meantime, you look at what's happening in South America, who's 
the soybean producer in Brazil, but then you've got Paraguay, who has not normally been um, importing beans. They usually are the ones that Argentina goes and tries to get some beans. And they're having, a, they're looking at a 60% loss. They're gonna be importing, in fact, they did for the first time ever this past week. That's who I thought you were gonna mention was the, the surprise, was the Paraguay. You don't really yes. read much about Paraguay. No, so, you don't. All right, we've avoided this, we've held it, we've teased it long enough. Couple, a year ago, you sat here and, and said a question, and uh, I want to ask it again. Jeff in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, uh, is asking, a lot of people are wanting to know here, Sue. Last year, when Sue was on the show, she predicted in 2023, beans would be at $30, corn would be at 18 and wheat would be somewhere 42 to 45 Do you still stand by these predictions, or would you like to revise them? I still stand by them. The wheat might take a little longer, you know, back in the 70s, you kind of walked through different markets. But I could see beans and corn this year into 23. Corn could even take us into early 24, depending on how we lay it out. Um, but I think, yeah, my glass is half full. I have not changed my opinion one bit. So the, the star, I, I alluded to it in the beginning that that's kind of where I wanted to go. What are the stars that need to align? Naomi Bloom has said a couple of things. What do you see? Does it have to be... I mean, the South American lack of a crop that we needed them to produce to contribute to the world, is that a factor? Well, it is, but that was kind of like a, a bonus. Okay. You know, because as these countries start to come alive and come un, you know, off of COVID restrictions, what have you, get factories running again, you're going to have inflation. You're pulling on commodities, but it's food, major food around the world that is in such demand. And when you look at, um, and prices have escalated, and I don't think that's done. I still think we're gonna escalate more. Last year was, um, we were wakening up, coming out of the lows of 2019 into 2020, and nobody believed it was possible. Kind of like if you'd have gone back to 1970 and told people when beans were trading around two bucks that they were gonna go to 1290 and 73 in June of 73. A huge percentage bump that would have been, yes. Yes, now think what that percentage is. I went back and looked at it. That percentage would equate to $37 beans in this next year if, if that we were gonna do the exact same percentage. When people say, is it possible? Oh, they'll all squirt around the, the circle and say, oh yeah, it's possible, but is it probable? No, well, guess what? If you look back at history and the percentages of even just in ordinary times from a low to where the ultimate high was off those lows, 250, 300%. I mean, they don't do their math. And this is, if you could have any perfect storm We've got it. You know, the, the frosting on the cake was the pandemic and the locking up of people and contracting and not getting food out on time through ships and what have you. Um, hungry people will fight. But here was the kicker, and this was part of my, my thought process too, is that back in the 90s, we went away from countries having reserves on hand and went to just-in-time inventorying because the U.S. was so good at producing about every even-numbered year, we put records on the table. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everybody thought, we don't have to, you know, store all this stuff. We'll just buy it as we need. Until this pandemic hit, and now all of a sudden they found this isn't so sexy anymore. They're, so you're seeing countries around the world start. Now here's the kicker. If it is true, and I boy, I wouldn't underestimate it at all, that China's granaries aren't as full as they thought they were because of all the fraud. And see, they made the mistake of paying these guys. Or rotten on. grain, which was a story a couple of years ago. That too. too. But keep in mind, into 2020, they finished getting rid of all of that old crop grain reserves that were so bad. So they, they weren't abundant then. And then they have the flood of 2020, the floods of 21, and here we are. So you get all of that and everybody, in fact, the USDA started separating out China from the WASDE numbers for global. So you start getting those numbers separated and you look and you say, gosh, China owns the major percentage of the grain in the world. Yeah, really? Well, guess what? If that's 
if that's been poppycock, watch them because they're going to they're going to tell you they're going to be buying because they know it will put fear and you're at a time when the rest of the world needs food and they're competing now against China the big elephant in the room they're not going to they're going to find sneaky ways to get it out the door and believe me they're getting it done all right let's uh let's wrap up with live cattle because i didn't quite finish we got a little bit of cattle and i'm going to be negligent if i don't uh you talk about the grocery store in your newsletter. You know, it's like there's been meat. There's some things that are there. We've we've shifted. The, the report on retail prices was we bought more in the stores, not at the restaurants. All these restrictions are being lifted across the country. We could see an onslaught at the restaurant industry again. What's that mean for the cattle market? Well, should, demand is good anyway. Demand is very good. And uh, exports are excellent. We've been shipping beef over to, to China. Um, Mexico, of course, is taking large amounts of pork. You know, China might come back in. By the way, uh, the uh, Central American uh, Free Trade Agreement, we're going to be sending a lot of pork down to that, to those Central American countries. But um, in the beef industry, you know, we went through, because of the dryness, we liquidate a lot of cow calves. So you've got a lot of calves, lightweights, in the feedlots. Now, next week on Friday, there'll be another cattle and feed report should show heavy placements again for the month of January. We get into March, it'll show it again in February. But the thing is, the, you get these cattle into the feedlots, they're getting a lot of corn, but along with it is that we've got a demographic of more young men coming into the country. But what else happened through that pandemic? People in the cities who used to just stop on their way home and pick up something from the locker or the the, the just-in-time purchase. Yes, and that's no longer. They they bought freezers and started putting food in the freezers to have on hand. That's a that's a change that's not going to go away. I, well, my freezer, I had to purge a little bit in December and January, and it is empty, but I do need to restock it, and I know I'm not alone in that. So That's right. We but, finish but, up your thought, because then the we have to But the feeder market, I think, is going to be really good. And I know we've got all these animals in the feedlots that in time will come, but it's going to take a little bit. And then, as we, if we stay hot and dry, whatever areas that still are out there surviving in the cow-calf herds, and then it's dry there again because you look at Nebraska, uh, parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas. Oh, I tell you, they're bone dry. Very little bone dry. Color. And if you start pushing more, by the time we get into next year, into February of 23, I think we'll be amazed at how high cattle is. And the cattle producer is the only one left that has not enjoyed a nice increase in prices. 142, 148, that is nothing. It's the best prices in cash markets since 2015. We're going to have to do another segment called Market Plus Plus. I know, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I just can't help. I wish you'd stick your neck out, Sue. You just don't, you're not saying anything. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Sue Martin, everybody, thank you so very much for your insight. We are entering that time here at the public TV stations that we are asking for your support. If you value the work of this program or the station in your area, please consider making a gift of support right now. Next week, though, the first indicator and the winner of the looming acreage battle, and Ted Seifert will join us to analyze the markets. Thank you for watching, and have a great week.